Well, happy holidays and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and I have a special episode for you today. It seems that every day a new flat earth scientist comes out with some photograph that he claims is definitive proof of the flat earth. And within a few hours, three or four more videos come out showing how this clearly shows curvature and a globe earth. So what I thought I'd do is I'd give you a few pointers and some instructions so that you could better analyze photographic evidence. Well, I saw this video today and I sent a note to Rory who put it out asking if I could just have a little practice with it. So let's have a look at his video and see what we can sort out. Hello to all the lovely flat earthers in the world. Um, I've got a question for you. It's quite a simple question. Where is eye level in this photograph? The viewer elevation is 5,481 feet. It's a picture taken in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia, or was it North Carolina? Anyway, the viewpoint is there if you want to look that up on the map. And all the elevations of the things that we're seeing and the distances to them are there as well. So it's pretty straightforward. Where is eye level in this picture? Well, this is an interesting shot, and it's a typical thing where we have a mountain in the front and some hills in the background. Now, I've never seen this photograph before, and since the location was either in North Carolina or Virginia, I did ask for some clarification. Rory immediately got back to me and gave me the location of that observation tower on Frying Pan Hill. Now, whenever we start to look at a photograph like this, there's certain questions that we have to ask ourselves. What can we clearly identify in the photograph? Next, what are some methods that we could use to identify the observation point for this photograph? Next, once we get kind of an idea of where the photograph was taken, is it consistent with what we're seeing in the picture? And by that I mean, are the numbers correct? Is the location listed correct, etc.? So after we decide that the picture makes sense, what does it actually show us? So let's get cracking. It looks like we have four mountains here. Uh, we have a ridge in the foreground with an observation tower and a radio tower on it. Okay, now that we have that established, what we're going to go with is things that we know for sure. We know where Frying Pan Mountain is. We locate the observation tower and we know that we are 5.5 miles from that, so we draw a circle around it with a radius of 5.5 miles. Now as a side note, uh, many of you know that I'm a pilot, and something that some of you may not know is that I do a lot of search and rescue. This is how we do cell phone forensics to try and locate things. Now using the same technique, we locate Bald Knob Mountain, and we draw a circle around it at the radius of 41.27 miles. And finally, we do the same thing with Greybeard Mountain, putting the given distance in and drawing a circle around it with that radius. Now, it should be quite apparent to everybody that where all of these circles touch each other is where the observation point is. Now, as you can see, those circles come together and the tangents form basically a line. So, although we have it narrowed down quite a bit, what we need is something that comes into that little line segment there at a high angle, like a 90 degree angle, to narrow it down even further. Let's see if we can do that. So heading back to Frying Pan Mountain, we're going to identify the observation tower and that little radio tower or whatever it is. Notice they appear to be laying on the ground in this Google Earth image, but that's just a technique that they do. You can clearly identify where their bases are. So we have a couple more pieces of information here. We know the observation tower is 70 feet tall from the information we got in the photograph. And now we know they're 225 feet apart. Now later we'll see another important thing that we can gather from this photograph, and that is the magnetic compass bearing from the base of that antenna to the observation tower. Now let's apply a little critical thinking to this. We know from the original photograph that the tower is 70 feet high. Now if we were to draw a line that is the height of the tower and figure out how many points that line is, we can kind of estimate how many points per foot. We can then measure the apparent distance from the observation tower to the antenna. Now using a little basic geometry, we, we just draw a circle around the tower at that radius. Then we draw a line from the base of the antenna that just touches that circle and run that back to where our other circles converged and we have our location. And that's what we've done here. So there are three circles from our hills and there is our bearing from the base of the antenna. 
and this is a pretty good estimate. In fact, that pin is where Rory later indicated the observation point actually was, and we are within 300 yards. Now just as a side note for you math types out there, uh, we have two legs of a right triangle here. We have the distance from the tower to the antenna, and we can easily use that to calculate the angle by the antenna and shoot a bearing directly back to our observation point. Now I know that I am close with this, but now we go to Google Earth and see whether or not we can actually see something like this from either of those locations. As it turns out, these locations don't work. There is a line of sight problem. There's a ridge between us and Frying Pan Mountain that is not visible in the photographs. And I made the decision to just check it again using a different landmark. In this case, I used the distance from the tower to Greybeard Mountain. I again drew the circle of radius and then the tangent line from the peak of Greybeard Mountain, and I came up with a slightly different location. Now, when I shot my bearing back to those uh, radial circles around the other mountains, I came to this location right here. Now, on the right, you can see the original claimed location. Uh, in the middle with the line, you can see where my intercept comes to. And then, as I was doing this, Rory sent me an email concerning another video that had analyzed this photograph, and the pin is the location that they came up with for the observer location. So now I have the exact location, the elevations, and everything that I need to solve this problem. Everything makes sense, and the sight lines are all good. So now we have to ask ourselves, does this photograph support a flat Earth or a globe Earth? So we go back to our original photograph, and we put in our elevation profile. So now we draw our line of perspective, or our line of sight, from our observation point through the fire tower, into the side of Greybeard Mountain. We see that that line hits Greybeard Mountain at about 4,750 feet, leaving about 750 feet of mountain above the line of sight between our observation point and the fire tower. Yet when we look at the actual photograph, Greybeard Mountain and Frying Pan Mountain appear to be the same height and are on the same line of sight. So we are clearly missing 720 to 800 feet of that mountaintop. Or more precisely, the mountain is 750 to 800 feet lower than we would expect it to be on a flat Earth. Our next step would be to go to the Curve of the Earth calculator and see how this compares to a curved Earth. And as you can see, the mountain will be fully visible from this elevation, and the drop is 880 feet. We are using standard refraction with this and not adding in any other figures just to get basically a ballpark figure. But that is enough to show that this photograph is consistent with a curved earth and is incompatible with a flat earth. This only took me about 10 or 15 minutes to figure out just based on one photograph in one location. But we're still seeing dozens of videos being put out about observation over X miles, no curve, flat earth. They are not only being produced, they're being applauded with the flat earth community without even spending five minutes checking them. So the next time you see one, just pull up Google Earth and spend five minutes and educate yourself on this and practice it. It's not only quite easy, it's very intuitive. So the next time Ranty or one of these flat earth experts puts out a no curve photograph, take five minutes and just look at it. Well, thank you once again for listening. I uh, do appreciate the growth of the channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. I'll have some more fun videos coming up in the coming weeks and months. So, see you then.